Hello, everyone. My name is Sagar Mahajan, and uh, I work as an education officer with uh, an organization named BNHS. The logo of the organization you can see on the top left of your screen. So BNHS stands for Bombay Natural History Society, and uh, this organization has been working for conservation of nature since 1883, that is 137 years now. So, uh, speaking of conservation of nature, you know, there are a lot of factors uh, when we have to conserve nature, right? Today, we will be speaking about the most common birds that are found around in our country, that is India, okay? So, before we go into that, there is a disclaimer that uh, a lot of photographs in this session are not clicked by me. So I'm very thankful for the photographers that have made these photographs of them available for people like us to use. Yep. Moving ahead. So speaking about birds. So do you know what exactly is a bird? I'm sure you know, but uh, let's just, uh, you know, summarize exactly what we know about birds. So uh, look at this picture here and uh, can you tell me if this is a bird? I'm sure a lot of you must be thinking that it's obviously not a bird, right? So, you know, I want you to think, why is it not a bird? Okay, so there are several reasons why, that's, why this is not a bird. So the first one probably that you will be thinking about is that this doesn't have wings, this doesn't have feathers, and uh, this cannot fly, right? So yes. These are the reasons why this particular creature is not a bird. We will not see what it is, but why this is not a bird. Okay. Okay. Now look at this picture. Uh, is this a bird? I'm sure you must be saying that, of course not. This is also not a bird. But why? Yes, same reasons. No feathers, no wings, and Right, no legs as, as well. There is no, uh, no legs as well. But uh, can you see, instead of feathers, what is there on its body? So instead of feathers, there are scales on its body, right? So, uh, yes, remember this uh, point. We will get on this one later. Now, how about this one? So we saw that birds uh, do not have, uh, so the previous ones do not have, did not have wings. This one seems to have wings, right? I'm sure you know what this is. Why is this not a bird? We will get back to this one uh, in, in, in the uh, upcoming slide. How about this one? I'm sure all of you must be having a uniform answer that yes, this is a bird. This is exactly what a typical bird looks like. This has a beak, it has uh, wings, it has feathers, it has tail, it has two legs, right? And yes, so on the basis of all these things that we have just seen, let's just summarize what exactly is a bird. Okay, so uh, feathers, yes, they do have feathers, they have two legs, they do not have scales as we saw in the earlier picture. Ear pinne, we will come to this one later, and uh, beak or bill, yes, they have beak, and flight, of course, they do fly. So coming to the ear pinne, that is external ear. You can see on the head of this particular flying creature, there are two external ears. Mind you, a bird will never ever have external ear on its head. Okay, remember that. So this makes this particular creature not a bird. Okay, this is what this is about. Ear pinne, that is external ears, are absent in a bird. Okay. So, to summarize a bird in just two words, we can say that it is a feathered biped. Bi means two, ped means legs. So, something with two legs and having feathers on its body is called as, uh, it can be summarized as a bird, right? What makes bird unique? The ability of the birds to fly makes them unique, right? It is what we have always been longing to do, to fly. That is what makes birds unique. To help them fly, their body is designed in that way. So, which is why their bones are hollow. Bones are very, very lightweighted. And 
because of that it makes the birds easier to fly have you ever seen a bird with teeth no birds do not have teeth right because uh, if they had teeth again teeth are very heavy so if the imagine a bird with heavy teeth flying in the air you know with after uh, flying for a certain amount of time it would just fall down on its uh, head right so instead of teeth what they have is serrations okay so uh, look at the representative image of serrations here on the right hand side as you can see serrations are the pointed brush like things okay and they are very very pointed so that whatever birds are trying to eat it will not slip out of their beak as just like we have two hands two legs one nose two ears similarly birds have their own morphology or birds have their own different parts we will not be looking into the details of it but more the major part so this is the beak and the upper part is called as upper mandible lower part is lower mandible and right below the beak there is a throat then there is a breast then there is belly and uh, i want you all to take a very very good look at these two parts the rump and the vent okay because we will be using this to identify certain birds so uh, right where the wing ends and the tail starts that's where the rump is located and right below the rump there is the vent okay so remember this point we will be talking about this later okay i'm sure you must have visited uh, uh, some uh, bird park or maybe bird sanctuary or national park and if you have seen birds there there are so many vivid colors in the bird right so many different colors and uh, yes not just the colors but uh, there are various shapes and sizes as well so like this one here on the left hand side cyrus plane can you imagine 180 centimeters that is taller than an average human being itself and on the other side on the other side there is a purple rump purple sunburn which is 10 less than 10 centimeter that is it would look smaller on the palm of your hand itself you can imagine how various shapes and sizes they are how various different colors they are what we say is that there are various species of birds okay so speaking of the number of species all over the world there are over 10,000 species discovered till date okay and in India there are around about 1300 of them 1300 species so you can imagine how naturally gifted our country is because you know more than 10 percent of the world's diversity of birds species diversity is found in India alone that is how uh, gifted our country is we will look into what are the different uh, uh, species found uh, in India, the common species only, we will be speaking about the common species only. So, granivores first. What are granivores? Granivores are simple, simply those feed that feed on grains. Okay. So, the feed, the jowar, the bajra. Okay. So, the very first granivore that comes into our mind is house sparrow, the one that we have been seeing since the very childhood okay as you can see it is most abundant and widespread in india so all the purple or the violet spots that you see on the map here is where this bird is located or recorded so apart from the high altitudes of himalayas and hot desert this found bird is found almost everywhere and as the picture can suggest the female and the male they both look very very different okay so the female is pale pale brown or buff colored and the male has very contrasting color it has black and white um, on the front and a brick red color on the back yes so yes you must have seen these birds uh, uh, in your surrounding but in few years there has been a speculation that uh, sparrow population is declining is it really declining what do you think have you seen sparrows around your house? Um, you may have, you may not have, depends upon where you stay, right? So, uh, yes, a sparrow population is uh, declining, but uh, if we see the population of entire India, the population is stable, but 
the population is seen to be decreasing in the major cities, metropolitan cities, the developing cities like Mumbai, Kolkata, Hyderabad, and Ahmedabad. So why are sparrows declining in these cities? Why are they moving from uh, developing cities towards, you know, um, less developed cities or towns or rural areas? So this is the reason, exact reason why. You know, rural housing or the old uh, buildings, they provide very good nesting spots for the birds. But on the other hand, on the below image, you can see that sparrows do not have much scope to nest. Okay, so this is why uh, the birds are moving towards the uh, areas where they can uh, find a good nesting spot. And there has also been a speculation that uh, sparrow population is declining because of the radiation of the mobile tower. But, you know, there is uh, no scientific data to support this theory and which is why we will stick to this one that uh, the rural air, the rural areas provide good nesting spots. Moving ahead to the next uh, sparrow or next uh, grainy bowl, that is yellow throated sparrow. It's also called as chestnut shouldered petronia. Okay, uh, look at on the shoulder, there is this orange color. This is not exactly orange, but it is called as a chestnut color and on the throat there is a yellow color okay and these are the reasons why this bird is called as yellow throated sparrow or the chestnut shouldered petronia and again you can see that this bird is almost found everywhere in india apart from the extreme habitats extreme the pre uh, the places where the climate is very extreme yeah uh yes it is also called as salim ali sparrow why is it called as salim ali sparrow do you know who is Dr. Salim? Read about him. If you do not, I will tell you in short. He is the father of Indian ornithology. Indian ornithol ornithology means study of birds. So he is the one who has studied Indian birds the most. Okay. So what he used to do in his childhood is that he used to slingshot the birds, hit the birds with slingshots, and uh, uh, you know, just to kill them. But one fine day, what happened is that by mistake, when he was slingshotting the sparrows, he found that this particular sparrow is different. There is a yellow color uh, patch on its throat. And so what he did is he took this sparrow, this dead uh, one, dead uh, bird, to the scientist, the person who was already studying birds, and. Uh, this person, he told him that, of course, this bird is different. So this is not our common house sparrow. This is the yellow throated sparrow. And since that day, Dr. Salim Ali was so curious about knowing more and more about birds that instead of slingshotting them, he started studying them and he became the father of Indian ornithology. So yes, if you do not know about Dr. Salim Ali, do read about him, okay? Yes, moving on to the next grainy bowl, that is Baya Weaver. Okay, you may have seen such kind of uh, nests in agricultural fields or open grasslands. Yeah, so this is the bird that is responsible for this beautiful, beautiful nest. Okay, again, the male and the female, you can see a clear difference in them. Male is again contrasting color with black and yellow on its body, and female is almost similar to that of the common house bird. Okay. Okay, and you know they make uh, colonial nesting. Okay, colonial nesting means there would be a huge tree and there would be a lot of bioweaver nest in one single tree. So this is how it is. Okay, a huge tree and there are a lot of nests on. And nowadays that there are agri uh, electrical lines running through the agricultural field, there are lot of birds that have been nesting on the electrical wires as well. So this is how the modern day Baya Weaver is adapting to the uh, human interventions. Next up is one of my personal favorites is uh, Scaly Breasted Munya. It's very, very cute little bird. As you can see, why is it called as Scaly Breasted Munya? Because on its breasts, the feathers make pattern of scales. Yeah. And on the, in the previous birds, we saw that uh, male and female, they both look different. But in this particular bird, it's not the case. 
male and the female, they're both exactly the same. But sometimes what happens is sometimes we, we uh, see pictures like this. So we get confused. It could be the one on the top is the male and one on the bottom is the female, but no, it is not the case. Okay. So on the bottom, this is the juvenile, that is the baby munia, and this is one the adult munia. So regardless of male or female, this is the adult and this is the uh, young one. Remember that. Again, one of our uh, uh, very, very familiar childhood familiar birds, rock pigeon, probably if you're watching this video and you take a look outside your window, you probably would see this bird even because it is so common. You can see the entire map is filled with uh, purple and violet patches. That is how abandoned, abundant this bird is. Very, very opportunistic. You give them any corner of your uh, house, you give them a uh, corner of your balcony, you give them outlet of your uh, air conditioner, they will start nesting on them, right? So, which is why they are very, very opportunistic and spread all over India. And there is another cousin or uh, because of this particular uh, species, member of the same family, the pigeon and dove family, the laughing dove, okay? Again, very common in agricultural fields and rural areas, okay? So why is it called as laughing dove? It is because when it is giving out its call, giving out its song, it seems like someone is laughing, okay? So I will play this call and uh, you can, you know, uh, uh, try to relate it. Isn't it? It seems like someone is laughing, right? So if you go to uh, agricultural field early in the morning, you will definitely hear this call. And it's uh, smaller than rock pigeon and color is also a bit different, right? So yes, this is where we end our um, grainy bows and now we are uh, moving towards the frugivores. Picture would have told you what are frugivores, simply meaning the birds that feed on fruits, right? So yes, the very first and our childhood favorite is rose ring parrot. Okay, so it is majorly crooky wood, but sometimes it does feed on grains as well. So as you can see, there are two birds here, one on the front, that is the female, and one on the back is the male. What is the difference between the male and the female? Do you have to see the neck of this bird, okay? So the male that is sitting on the back side has a black chin strap and the pink colored or rose colored drink. So this is what uh, is, this is absent in the female. So this is how you identify a male, distinguish a male from a female. And uh, now look at the beak size and the shoulder, okay? And now look at this bird, okay? So beak, in this bird, beak is very, very large. This one, the beak is very, very small. So a large beak, and uh, a maroon patch on the shoulder that is what makes this species different from the previous one the previous one was rose ring parakeet this one is the alexandrian parakeet and mind you alexandrian parakeet is the largest parakeet in indian subcontinent okay so yes and the identify male from female it has the again similar attributes okay black chin strap and the pink colored ring on the snake you see the smaller picture, there is no, it is a female, no black chin strap and rose ring. Okay. Yes, one of the very, very uh, common birds in, again, India, that is copper smith parbet. You know, uh, this parbet is again a very tiny bird, almost the size of a, uh, a sparrow. Okay. So it is green in color on the back side and it has this red ground and red on its throat. Okay. You may not have seen this bird, but uh, you must have uh, heard this bird sometime when you are having, uh, you know, uh, morn, uh, morn, uh, walk early in the morning. So try to uh, listen to the call and try to, you know, uh, Rela uh, relate it if you have heard it somewhere in uh, when you are having work. So this is how it gives out its call. So 
so it's not exactly the same but uh, somewhat similar to that okay so next time you hear this call you try to locate this bird uh, on on the trees nearby yeah and yes asian quail of course when it comes to the singing part asian quail is one of the sweetest singing birds you know and the sweet call that we hear is that of a uh, male okay the female female cannot sing uh, as sweet as that of a male so let's just first see how a male looks like the one on the back again is the male jet black in color with cherry red eyes and the female she has black and white spots on her body okay now this is how a, a male calls that you must have heard that was the main uh, this is the female so these are the pet two very distinct calls and from the lo just looking at this bird as well just from hearing as well you can tell which is the male and which is the female okay and these birds are brood parasite asian quail belongs to a family called as cuckoo family okay or cuculiforms so all the birds in this uh, family are brood parasites all except for one which is that one we will speak about it later what is brood parasite brood parasite means those that make uh, those that lay their eggs in the nest of some other bird okay and asian quail exploits house crew most for that yes so asian quail distracts the crow and lays its own eggs in the nest of the crow okay and the crow uh, raises the chick of um, asian quail as uh, his own so this is uh, a very very clear picture this is a female chick a female young one of uh, asian quail and the crow is feeding that baby yes moving on to the nectarivores nectarivores simply mean that uh, those that feed on nectars uh, that is the juice from the flower the flower syrup so to drink from a flower the beak of that particular bird has to be modified accordingly right so look at the beak of this bird it is curved it is long it is pointed and this is how it uh, you know probes into the flower and you know sucks the nectar out of it so this particular bird is purple rump sunbird now why is it called as purple rump sunbird i remember i told you to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, make a look of for uh, where the rump is located Okay, so see, but where the wing ends and where the tail starts, that's where the rump is located. As you can see, there are purple-colored feathers on its rump. So yes, which is why it is called as purple rump sunbird. Again, very very tiny bird, even smaller than our house sparrow. And there is another uh, common bird in uh, nectarivores that is purple sunbird. okay now if you see this bird in a shade it will appear black in color completely black in color but if the sunlight hits its body the glossy metallic uh, purple color will be revealed as you can see in this picture very very beautiful uh, bird and again as you can see the beak is how beak is modified to sip the nectar from the flower insectivores insectivores simply mean that the birds that feed on insects so the very first one that we have here is uh, a cockle now what is a uh, i remember i told you that uh, uh, all the members of uh, cuckoo family are brood parasites except for one now uh, this is that exception southern cockle okay it is also called as crow pheasant see non brood parasitic member of cuckoo family and it is very commonly seen in the garden because that's where most of the time insects are okay it majorly feeds on insects but may also feed on a uh, small reptiles sometimes
Yes, moving on to the common tailor part. Why is it called as common tailor? What does a tailor do? Tailor weaves its tailor weaves the clothes right with the help of needles and uh, threads. Now, a tailor bird also weaves, but what does it weave? It weaves the nest using its sharp beak as a needle and grass blades and spider webs etc as threads now, as you can see on the picture below how this uh, uh, leaves have been weaved together to form a conical structure and inside that a nest is made and there are then there are two to three lay eggs laid inside inside this small time leaves. now yes a very uh, short break a uh, trivial question for you all what is the national bird of india I'm very sure all of you must have given very prompt answer. What is it? Easy. It's Indian peacock. Yes, very, very magnificent and very, very beautiful bird, right? So, yes, national bird of India is peacock. Shifting gears to the omnivores. What are the Omnivores simply means those that feed on anything and everything that is found in the environment. Okay. So the very first uh, omnivore that comes into our mind is the crow. So there are two species of crows that are commonly found around us. Okay. The first one is the jungle crow here and the other one is the house crow. Now you can clearly see the difference. The jungle crow is entirely black in color and the house crow, it has gray colored neck and the belly otherwise uh, it is black but the jungle crow is entirely black and the beak of uh, the jungle crow is also a bit larger than that of a house crow another omnivore is red vented bulb now take a look at the vent here where is the vent located let's just see right where the wing ends and the tail starts that's where the rump is located and rump is white in color and right below the rump there is the vent and vent is red vented red in color which is why it is called as red vented bulbul now uh, take a look at this scaly wings and this black faced uh, head and now look at this one okay the wings are not scaly and the face is not entirely black this has red colored whiskers on the beyond the eye which is why it is called as red whiskered bulbul. So yes, these are the two common bulbuls found in India and bulbuls are again omnivores. Another omnivores is uh, common maina. Very, very, again, very common in, uh, even in the forest, even in the cities, in the agricultural fields, you know, omnivores. Uh, they're also kleptoparasite. Kleptoparasite means those that snatch the food from another birds other birds okay so they readily go and uh, snatch the food from another other birds like uh, crows and others piscator piscator now this word in latin literally means the fisherman and this is the fisherman of avian world white throated kingfisher this is very magnificent bird and it is very clear why it is called as white throated kingfisher because the throat is white in color right so yes and the another pescator in the avian world is common kingfisher it's smaller than the previous one but uh, yes now this small one here will only feed on fishes it will not feed on anything else but white throated kingfisher it can feed on other uh, fishes as well as reptiles amphibians crabs and other things now the filter feeders now i have only included one gorgeous bird in this category that is flamingo there are two uh, species of flamingos that uh, visit uh, india during winters right the one is lesser flamingo and the other is greater flamingo but the lesser flamingo the beak of the lesser flamingo is dark maroon in color while that of the greater flamingo it is baby pink in color with the black tip on it yeah and this is how they feed they put their head upside down on the water and then they take all the water in their 
beak. And you can see there is this filter on the beak which helps them to expel the water out of their beak and only the food material left is left inside their beak, inside their mouth. So this is how they filter their food and eat. Birds of prey, that is the hunter birds. So now we are looking into the hunters of the avian world. So this one here, black kind, is the most common uh, hunter of um, uh, uh, in the avian world. Okay, so it is carnivore as well as scavenger, can feed on the dead and decaying matter as well. So as you can see, the bird has scaly pattern on its wings and it is abundantly seen on the dumping ground, okay, on the, uh, uh, all where the uh, uh, trash of the city is collected. So this is how you can distinguish between a kite and an eagle when they are in flight, okay. So uh, in the kite, in the kite, the tail would be either triangular or fish, fish like four, okay, as you can see, these are the two kite pictures, but in eagle, you can see it is completely fan like the shape of the fan, right? So this is how you can identify between, distinguish between a kite and the eagle when they're in flight. Next up is Shikra, one of the smartest hunters uh, in, the, in the air. Because it is very small raptor and very dull colored. So, which is why it is very difficult for any uh, prey to see this bird. So, it can hide in the plain sight and kill very, very efficiently. Night riders. So, now all the birds that we have seen till now are going to sleep. And these birds are going to rise because it is night time and their time. So spotted owlet is one of the most common night rider in our India. And uh, as you can see, why is it called a spotted owlet? Because it has very heavy spots on its body. Now, this picture I had taken in a very, very daylight. So you can see that this bird is sleeping. And once it uh, is uh, dark, they will start rising. Next up is a uh, common barn owl that is uh, also called as ghost of the cities because it is mainly seen in the cities only. As you can see, uh, there are golden and gray patches on the wings, but when it is flying, you will only see a white huge figure in the air. So this is how they look when they're in flight. Okay. So yes, those were the most common species that uh, are found in our country. And now what we will look into is why exactly this bird exists? Why, what is the nature? What is the role of uh, birds in nature? Okay. So first one is pollination. Can you think about what is a pollination? Okay. Picture is uh, very, very clear. Okay. So look at the first picture here. The sunbird is trying to sip the nectar from the uh, flower and what happens is there are tiny pollen grains on the flower. So uh, this sunbird accidentally sticks this pollen grains on its beak. Now look at this second picture here. Imagine a bird instead of a butterfly. Okay. So this bird uh, is getting pollen grains from this flower and it is going to the next flower. Now what will happen is that once these pollens are transformed, there will be something called as fertilization, which will lead to uh, formation of a fruit there. And you know why fruit is where a uh, fruit is very important. The uh, fruit is very important for two reasons. Okay, uh, because so that we can eat it, and secondly, there is seed inside it. Okay, so seed it gives rise to a new tree altogether. Right. So this is why birds are important in nature. Second is germination and dispersal. Okay, so yes, uh, birds, when they eat a fruit, what happens is it passes through their digestive system and then it, when it poops, then uh, uh, it flies away and it poops somewhere else. And in their uh, dropping, there are the seeds of the fruit that they have eaten. And that's where, again, the new tree starts growing. So again, it is the birds are very important in uh, expanding the forest. Pest control. We saw there are a lot of insectivorous birds and insects can sometimes damage our farms, right? Our agricultural fields, which is why 
the birds are here to control the population of these insects or any other pest for that matter. Scavenging, yes, our vultures, our crows and kites, you know what they do? They feed on dead and decaying uh, the uh, dead bodies of the uh, animals in the in the forest or anywhere else. Why is it important, you know, because when some animal dies, a lot of disease causing animals, uh, uh, pathogens can grow on that dead body and it can cause uh, spread of diseases to the other healthy animals and could be to humans as well. So, thanks to our scavengers like crows, vultures and kites, the disease spread is prevented. Yes, bird and birds indeed have a very important role to play in food chain. So it is not just the population of insects that has to be controlled, but the population of birds has to be in control as well. Okay, so there are higher predators to take care of it. And these birds, they serve as food to these higher predators. So just like this jungle cat is feeding on the uh, a chick of a uh, bird. And cultural value, yes, there is a lot of there is a lot of cultural value in India, especially being culturally diverse country. So there are uh, there are only two examples that I have taken. There are a lot of them. Uh, the uh, Vahana of Goddess Saraswati is peacock, then Vahana of the Goddess Lakshmi is owl. So yes, and last but not the least, recreational value, a bird watching. So there are a lot of people who are now uh, taking up bird watching as their hobby. There are a lot of people taking bird watching as a career option as well. And you, as youngsters, you also can take take up bird watching as a career or uh, you know hobby or career as well. So you can uh, go out there, watch birds, and try to identify them, try to see what they're doing, try to study their behavior. If uh, sometimes you may not be able to identify them. Uh, them from the picture or out on the field. So, uh, you know, there is a mobile application that uh, our organization DNHS has come up with that is called as Internet of Birds. And, you know, you can download it from Apple iPhone or uh, Google Play Store as well. Now, I will not speak uh, into detail about the working principle of this application. Uh, you can uh, download it from Internet and you can see it for yourself. Okay. So, yes, with that said, I'm very, very thankful for all of you to uh, patiently listening to this talk. And I'm sure I uh, must have, uh, you know, uh, made few of you, uh, you know, curious about watching. So uh, go out there and watch birds once the conditions are safe. And until then, stay indoors, stay safe and take care. Thank you very much.